do this meeting with the public. Before we begin, I would like to just make one uh, blanket statement and get in, and we'll get right into our meeting. We have some presentations, we have our student rep. I, I would like to say tonight and this evening, uh, there, we, we won't have any dialogue as it pertains to any transition that will happen here in the district related to any of uh, our schools that we've gotten some great information and feedback from multiple uh, stakeholders. And we are now fully analyzing that information and we'll be presenting a comprehensive plan within the next 30 days. So we're not going to entertain any public comment as it relates to it. You most certainly can give public comment, but there won't be any response to dialogue back and forth. All right. So with that being said, Dr. Parkinson, your report, please. All right. Thank you, Receiver Nichols, and good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Um, student board rep, board members around the table. Um, all of our community members, administrators in the audience and cabinet. Um, I want to start by first acknowledging some great things and events that have occurred in the district over since our last meeting. On no November 17, several students and staff hosted a Thanksgiving luncheon for our seniors in the community. This event was well attended by many of our community uh, members, dignitarians, our mayor was present, uh, city council members, some of our board members were present, administrators. It was an amazing event. This event was in conjunction with our culinary arts and marketing program. Um, the food was amazing, uh, if I must say. Um, but this was actually done outside of the, um, our auditorium and great, great event for our seniors in the community. So again, happy Thanksgiving to all of those um, who attended and who are sitting in the audience and, and viewing us on television. There was also an Eagles virtual social emotional learning event that took place this past Wednesday, November the 16th where over 1,500 students statewide had the opportunity to participate and ask the Eagles questions um, regarding coping strategies and what motivates them as NFL players and just as individuals. Um, out of those 1,500 students who attended, we were fortunate to have some of our very own um, Chester Upland School District students be able to ask an Eagle, Eagle a question. So I thought that was an amazing event. Again, this was brought to us by, I know, Mr. Laws, um, Ms. Bowser and administrative staff at the high school had the opportunity to make this happen for our students. So again, um, students had a great, great time with that. Um, we held our, our annual family summit this past Saturday and very good turnout, strong turnout. Um, during that summit, we were able to provide some information regarding our Pennsylvania uh, Youth Survey, which provided a great deal of data um, regarding social emotional for our, you know, activities for our students. Um, you know, talked about just health, school health, personal health, different things. So it was a great, great turnout for that, this event. Um, we actually raffled off some bikes, a lot of family fun for, the, for our um, community to enjoy. Also want to make everyone aware our Twilight program has um, started, actually it begins this coming Monday. This coming Monday. We are excited to offer that. Um, it will take place in Chester High School, but will be open to high school students throughout the district. Um, this is just another um, alternative learning opportunity we're providing our students. As we're aware, there are many students um, who work during the day who have had to make the option or the decision, can I attend school or do I have to go to work to support my family? So this Twilight program is going to provide another uh, vehicle, um, another means of education for our students. So again, I want to thank all the staff who will be supporting that program. And um, again, Dr. Sutton um, for, for you know, bringing this to fruition. I know this has been something we wanted to get started in September, but I'm excited to report that we will begin this program this coming November. Um, this, excuse me, this coming uh, Monday. Um, that will be great for our students. And um, next, I want to speak to you about the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan, we are actually in the final stage of this. Um, we started this process of developing a comprehensive plan of Jan in January of 2022. Several meetings were held with all stakeholders who identified a list of priorities. Uh, the first priority was, and these are all if statements, if the Chester Upland School District implements a structured, unified K-12 curriculum, then both student academic growth and core discipline achievement will increase as measured by local assessments, such as iReady and MAP, and by state assessments, such as PSSAs, Keystones, WIDA, and PASSIVE. PS, passive. Um, second priority is, if professional development aligns with district priorities related to curriculum and instruction, and it is monitored for implementation, then student performance will increase. If professional development can be implemented, mon monitored, and evaluated within one system, then teachers are better prepared for instructional purposes or to support teaching and learning. 
If teachers and paraprofessionals are included in the development of professional development prior to the sessions, then professional development will be based on the stated needs of the teachers excuse me, and the paraprofessionals. All right, next for statement. If the organization's structure and focus are clear and widely accepted, in that case, we should be able to build professional development programs that meet the needs of the teachers and transfer down to our students. If teachers are given the opportunity to lead, per, 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 excuse me, lead professional development, then teachers would be more likely to buy in and implement initiatives. I would agree with that. The third, the third priority is if teachers in the Chester Upland School District create curriculum maps that are implemented with fidelity, the different needs of the different schools and their student body from K to 12 curriculum will result in measurable student progress throughout uniform instruction. And our fourth and final priority from that group is if branding and storytelling telling is presented in a better image, we will attract a more qualified staffing pool and be able to create stability for the children of our district. If we develop a more in, in, intentional recruiting strategy, we will recruit more qualified professionals for the core content and special education areas. So from those priorities, several goals were created, along with several action steps that will be measured semi-annually. Each quarter, an update will be provided to all stakeholders with an update on the progress. So what we need for the community to do now is tomorrow, this information, this plan will be posted on the district website. We're asking all community members, all of our stakeholders to go onto the district website and read through the plan. Um, you know, it's, you know, look at it, give some feedback. I'm asking all of you to send your feedback to, this is the name of the email address. It's askthesuperintendent at chesteropland.org. And that email address will be at the bottom of the plan. So I'm asking you just to review that plan. Um, the plan needs to be posted for the next 28 days. Um, so you have 28 days to provide your feedback. And at the end of the 28 days, we'll send that plan to the state. And that will be our comprehensive plan. From our comprehensive plan will then come um, the birth of our strategic plan. So we will obviously use the data and the information from our strategic, from the comprehensive plan, along with um, our, our meetings with Mass Insight. Mass Insight is in is in our community now. Actually, some of our uh, community members have met with Max Insight. So what they're doing right now is they're helping us to recreate our uh, financial recovery plan that is, is required under receivership. So more information to come um, regarding that as well. I want to make everyone aware that our district safety committee has begun meetings regularly to assess the overall safety throughout the, di the entire district across all areas. Each department and or job um, function will have a representative that will attend these meetings um, that they, when, when they're held. So just want to make everyone aware of that. And finally, the district has reached a tentative agreement with the PSEA, the professional contract union, that will change some areas of the current contract. As we, as we all give um, our professionals their years, this contract it will give their, our professional their years of service um, that they work in the district. While uh, the original plan was to be approved this evening, sometimes the notes just throw you off, people. Uh, the original plan was to be approved this evening. Um, we are going to table that for our next meeting. Uh, we weren't able to um, approve that tonight due to unforeseen circumstances. So with that being said, the plan will be once it's reviewed, signed, um, we'll, we'll obviously um, break, date it back to the, um, the date that it was signed originally. So that's my report, Receiver Nichols. Thank you, Dr. Parker. Our student rep. About 7 a.m. for our week-long journey. The first tour we attended was Norfolk State University, which was our which our tour guide was very fond of because she was an alumni. So whenever I do hear about that school, I will always think of Behold the Green and Gold. <laughs> Day two was my favorite, hands down. We went to Virginia State University, which was a very historically pleasing college. On this day, we also had a chance to visit Shaw University, which was a small school populated by 1,500 students. This was also a day where we could enjoy the environment we were in, so our chaperones took us to go see Black Panther. And we also went to Dave and Buster's. I think I can speak for all the students when I say this day was very much appreciated. 
bakery is going to be held there to my heart forever. On November 16th, we took a tour of North Carolina Central, and this was my actually my first time hearing about this university. And as soon as we stepped foot on the campus soil, I knew it was the college for me, so I will be trying my hard, hardest to attend next year. Oh. George Washington University was the first and only predominantly white institution we visited. The tour was very, very thorough, and we went through every part of the campus. It was scattered throughout downtown Washington. Our last stop before heading home was Morgan State University. We attended Morgan Day and really saw how HBCUs spend their Fridays. I do want to thank some people who really made this trip happen from Chester Upper School District, Receiver Nichols, Dr. Parkinson, Dr. Sutton, Ms. Mosley, and Ms. Hales. They worked very hard to allow us on this trip. School board members, Ms. Quayle, Ms. Neal, Ms. Neal, as well as Ms. Denise Mosley, were uh, the many people who sponsored students. And finally, Coach Karen Maya, who worked tirelessly to collect donations from alumni and other community organizations. We couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. I'm excited that you guys, you, you, you young ladies and young men, had a great time on the college uh, tour, and we look forward to sending many, many more. I know Chester High School will be going on there in February next year. You know, to probably I would love. Like I said, you guys have to go earlier and do it. Do it. We will love that. We'll make it work. 150 kids next year. All right. So, Mr. Brown, Chester High School, you're up. Good evening, Receiver Nichols, Superintendent Parkinson, and President Neal, the rest of the board members of Chester Upton School District and our community partners, as well as the cabinet members here. Chester High School uh, has several highlights that are not in the current slide, but I want to present them to the board and to the community as these are achievements that uh, we look forward to and continue to grow with our students. Uh, today we had our CSI plan and our daily average attendance exceeded the expectation of our CSI plan. Uh, the expectation was 67% and Chester High uh, achieved 77%. So that's a, an acknowledgement that I want to share with you and the community as it is a step in the right direction towards motivating our students. and. So, as a part of our community partnerships, uh, on our slides, you have uh, men of uh, Cap Alpha Psi, and also we had uh, AKA members that uh, had a donut day for the students at Chester High School where they start to gel and, and uh, forge partnerships and discuss things like college, uh, career paths. And other opportunities, and then what it what it means to be a member of an organization uh, like Kappa Alpha Psi or Kappa Alpha, and that helped our students understand what we're trying to promote when we want to promote college attendance and looking beyond high school. Our students went to HBCU tour in Delaware. Um, we had four tours overall, and to record, we have 30 students that have received acceptance and admission letters into various universities and colleges. Uh, thanks to the help of the staff and our PBIS team, we uh, acknowledge our staff with, student, with the Staff Teacher of the Month uh, for September and October, and also National Principal Day, which uh, Mr. Thompson uh, was the uh, recipient of National Principals Month. Okay. So the highlight of one of our new initiatives is the Hispanic Heritage Month. And here to be more elaborate and give you some insight uh, how that went, uh, had Ms. Bowser come to the meeting so that she can share exactly uh, what the students felt and the feedback she got from the students by presenting this to our high school. Yeah. <laughs> I try not to wear the same outfit I had on. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and thank you for having me here. As we all know, Chester Upland School District is a very rich district when it comes to culture, and especially with our Latinx population with close to 10%. 
So when Principal Brown and I were talking about what can we do for Hispanic Heritage Month besides broadcasting it on the urban news, which they're doing a phenomenal job, uh, we came up with the idea of closing out Hispanic Heritage Month for the celebration. Um, I brought my speaker and, you know, the kids, I think, were shocked when they walked into school that day. There was music playing. Um, we purchased candies from different Latin American countries. And with the help of Ms. King and the marketing team, we also hung up posters of different Latin uh, American individuals. And interestingly, there was an article, um, you know, that was put into the newspaper and the press. If you haven't had a chance to read it, I encourage you to, because there were some great quotes in there um, regarding some of our students that I don't even think we realize have a history or a background in Latinx culture. So some of the kids walked into the school saying, hey, I used to eat this candy at my grandmother's house or you know, I, this, every morning when we come to school, I listen to this music in my mom's car. So there was a real sense of appreciation there, and we hope to do more things like this um, in conjunction with all of the schools in the district. But th I think that this was a great start. So I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy that we were able to do this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bowser, for your efforts. Um, it's greatly appreciated by our students. So Spirit Week, our students uh, really enjoy uh, showing off their different sides of their character and personality in Spirit Week. Uh, it's built a lot of school spirit and a lot of uh, camaraderie. I mean, you know, different students did different things. Um, and we actually had the chance to see them in a different life where they were relaxed, they were having fun, and they were just being teenagers that enjoyed high school. So that was a positive thing. Our pep rally. Uh, was phenomenal. Uh, I think it's the first time, and I'm not sure, but first time that STEM Academy and Chester High School were a unified pep rally. Uh, the students enjoyed themselves. The staff, as you can see, also enjoyed themselves. And it really was a good time uh, to be had by all. So again, that's something we look forward to doing more of in time. Our homecoming dance, as you can see, the students enjoyed that the most. Uh, they had to dress up present themselves and just have a night on the town and experience, you know, being in a high school dance, especially for homecoming, it meant a lot. Uh, our homecoming event with our homecoming court, our cheerleaders, as well as the game was a highlight uh, at halftime. Um, the students uh, actually uh, enjoyed the fact that we had an open uh, process where we could have two kings, two queens, uh, whatever the, the students voted for, that would be the winner uh, for how we conducted the event. So our haunted house adventure, our senior class advisor uh, gave the students opportunity to go to Easter State Penitentiary to experience Halloween in a different light. Uh, even though they're high school students, they had a great time and it meant something to them to go and have this opportunity to go outside the city and enjoy an experience like Halloween. Okay, our bookstore. Um, we were uh, able to revamp our bookstore with the help of Ms. King and the marketing students, as well as our 12 plus students uh, in special education. And this is what we presented. The students actually facilitate the store and they're uh, observed by teachers to make sure that they uh, follow processes and that they know the pricing and also learn customer service. So again, this is another initiative that we're proud of and that we, keep, we hope continues to keep growing. So our coat drive, we hosted a coat drive here, uh, something unique and special, um, the opportunity to give back to the community by uh, providing to people in the community, some students, but just some citizens in the community to have that opportunity to receive a free coat, uh, have a good time, and uh, know that we care about them and we're giving back. Uh, our student body, our female student population and student government wanted to host a female powder puff football game. And with, because of the success, this is now going to be an annual event that we have the week after homecoming. So that, uh, again, a tradition that we've started will be continued. And it also gives the students 
the opportunity to see what they started and have it grow and uh, be a tradition, a part of uh, the Chester High School. Our senior penny ceremony, uh, again, another joint uh, ceremony for STEM Academy and Chester High School. Uh, a very uh, uplifting event. Uh, students and parents alike were very proud and glad uh, that they were there to see their students be acknowledged and with Bell, as well as myself, appreciate the fact that parents, we had full parent participation and student participation uh, to showcase the 2023. Our college tour, to, again, we have four college tours where our students are applying to schools, venturing out, looking into different career paths, and finding out what it takes to be a college student and how to get there. We provide uh, fast for uh, orientation for them to fill out their financial paperwork to be able to attend college uh, at minimum cost. Grand opening of our Clipper Cafe. Uh, we are super proud of the culinary arts student who they, they got together, uh, they made the food, they provided serving the food, and they showed off their customer service, and they extended uh, their hospitality to some uh, state visitors and guests, as well as uh, district uh, administration to show you know their skills. Uh, we're very proud of them, and they as they continue <laughs> to develop and grow. Our teacher of the month for October, Mr. Lapinus Pickett. He's one of our PE teachers. He's also a class advisor, uh, and he's our coordinator for our credit recovery and after school program. Again, a young teacher now engaging in uh, efforts to help build the school and continue to grow our students. We have uh, future events. We have an uh, overnight college tour in February, uh, community service uh, opportunities that we're planning, uh, additional one-day college tours, uh, the CTE competition, and other student activities um, that will be uh, posted on Chester High School website. Uh, Ms. Crow has gifts for, uh, from our marketing students that we'd like to pass out to you. For marketing students, I'm one of the assistant professors over at the high school. Um, our marketing department made you guys a water bottle. Oh, Is that enough for everyone? Yeah. Thank you, Thank you, Princeton Brown. Thank you, sir. So I'm I'm always going to make a push. I think you should have these upstairs in the. I think it's called the Clipper Closet now, right? And sell them instead of giving away free to the people up here. Everyone to get their bucketes. Yeah. <laughs> Other than the, the school, school courts, like toiletries and hygiene like, pots. I would say, if you give us the price for them, receiver nickels will be yeah. the tax. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I give away all of my state money. <laughs> At this time, we will have the approval of the minutes from the previous meeting on November 2nd, 2022. I hereby approve the minutes as submitted from the November 2nd, 2022 meeting. I'm sorry. No, no, the November 2nd, 2022. That was our last meeting. Do this one. All right, they are hereby approved. At this time, we will now have public comment on action items only. If anyone wishes to give public comment on agenda items only, you may step to the podium, state your name and address for the record. I don't know if there's a sign-in sheet to that tonight. Have that as well. <clears throat> if there is no public comment, I will move on to our action items. Disregard. Okay. Thank you. 
All right, so I hereby approve agenda items A1 through A. A14. Agenda items A1 through A14 are hereby approved. We'll move on to our personnel agenda. I hereby approve agenda items B1 through B2 under our personnel agenda. We now move on to our business agenda. Hereby approve agenda item C1 through C7 under our business agenda. Under our ESSER agenda. Hereby approve action items D1 through D6 under our ESSER agenda. We have nothing under our policy agenda. We will now move for general public comment. It's not our signing sheet. It has been withdrawn. At this point, I guess our meeting is adjourned. I wish you a very, very happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you.